Thanks for speaking to V&T today, Cindy. Welcome to Australia. Let's start with the first question. Why is the 3% conference so important? The 3% conference is critically important to Australia um, and the Australian economy as a whole because it is about the single most crucial thing that every business needs, which is creative talent in order to deliver creativity of everything, creativity of innovation, disruption, execution, monetization, in order to be able to break through a number of old world order constraints that are holding every industry back and be able to not only own the future of the industry, to be able to grow and scale your business to phenomenal heights, but also to make an absolute goddamn fucking shit ton of money. Fantastic. What are the dangers if we don't tackle the problem, Cindy? The dangers if Australia does not really take a long, hard look at how to free up its creative talent and how to use creativity as a phenomenal business revenue generating, but also world reputation making force is that um, not only will Australia be leaving a huge amount of money on the table, but also missing a very big opportunity, one I'm going to talk about in my keynote, which is an opportunity to set a creativity agenda for the rest of the world. And that's because there are opportunities that are being missed all around the world. I particularly want to see Australia benefit from this because my roots are in the Asia Pacific region as a whole. Um, I'm half Malaysian Chinese, half English. I grew up in Brunei. I worked for two years in Singapore. I've made many business trips to Australia in the course of my advertising career. And, and so I freely admit that I'm biased. I see all too often um, markets like the US, where I live and work now, um, the UK, where I obviously have worked for a long time, um, operating old school colonial attitudes toward this region in terms of believing that they are in transmit mode and we here are in receive mode. Nothing could be further from the truth. I see in my consultancy work, speaking work and travels around Asia Pacific, phenomenal talent and creativity, really interesting ideas that have the opportunity to be case studies and showcases for each country um, out on transmit to the rest of the world, the rest of the world could learn from. And so I think there's a colossal opportunity for Australia to really capture the spirit of what is Australian creativity in a way that can be recognised globally to Australia's tremendous business, economic and reputational benefit. Tell us about the uh, necklaces you've got on there, Cindy. They seem very um, individual. So these are my social media necklaces. So the first one is my Facebook like necklace, um, which I wore into a meeting, um, a presentation I gave at Twitter New York and Twitter weren't very happy. So then Twitter sent me this, which is my Twitter handle and necklace. So I have to wear them both. Um, these are my social media necklaces and that's fine because I'm a Twitter and Facebook addict. But actually I wear them for a very specific reason, which is that these necklaces, especially the Facebook like one, are emblematic of my philosophy of business and technology. So my work um, and my startups are all about using technology to make things happen in the real world. When I wear these necklaces, they elicit real world responses. Actually, the Facebook like one is interesting because there is a generational divide. So people always smile and comment um, on my Facebook necklace. Younger people go, Oh, how nice, a Facebook like. Older people go, oh, how nice, a thumbs up. But either way, um, what these are are digital symbols that elicit a positive response in the real world. And that is what my work is all about, using technology to make really positive things happen in the real world. And so I literally am wearing um, symbols of my own um, business and life philosophies.